fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. I guess everyone knows what Wheaties, Tricks, Sugar Jets, Cheerios, and Kicks cereal boxes look like. But right now, your grocer has some that are real different. Just turn them around, and presto, you're looking at a magic Disneyland park light up. Light them up with Christmas tree lights, and they look so real you can imagine you're seeing Disneyland Park at night. There's Sleeping Beauty's Castle, and a special lion light up that looks almost as real as the lions in Walt Disney's new True Life Adventure Technicolor picture, The African Lion. Altogether, there are 18 different light ups, and here's how you get them. Just look for the Mickey Mouse sign on the front of Wheaties. Cheerios, Hicks, Tricks, and Sugar Jets. The Mickey Mouse sign tells you that there's a Disneyland park light up on the back of each package, free of extra cost. Start collecting Disneyland park light ups right now. Just look for the Mickey Mouse sign on the front of Tricks, Sugar Jets, Kicks, Cheerios, and Wheaties. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll still <laughs> Old Sam Trotter made his way through a driving thunderstorm. It was a treacherous trail along the side of a steep mountain whose slopes were covered with shale and huge boulders. A bolt of lightning struck close at hand. The brilliant flash and the crack of thunder partially dazed the old man. He wasn't aware of the landslide until it was too late. <laughs> His horse lost its footing and fell. Sam was thrown clear, but both he and the horse were swept on down the mountainside. Sam regained consciousness. The storm had passed and the sun was shining. His body was a mass of aches, and he found it difficult to breathe. But he was not alone. As his vision cleared, he saw the face of an Indian and heard the Indian say, I'm conscious now. A white man whose face was partially covered by a mask came from the side of a small campfire. Tonto has some broth for you, Sam. We're going to keep you here until you're strong enough to move into town. You know my name. We found a letter in your pocket. It's from my grandson. He come to old town where I live. Then you answered his letter? I I had Ma Collins answer it. Ma Collins? She she runs the boarding house in old town where I've been staying. She wrote and told Larry to come here. I I'm getting so weak. Close your eyes. Rest a little while, Sam. Then have some broth. Uh, listen. There's lots more to tell, but I can't tell it till I'm at the boarding house. Take me there. Maybe the last thing I'm asking of anyone in this world. Get me get me to my bedroom before it's too late. You can make him as comfortable as possible in my saddle. I'll ride behind the saddle and hold him. It was evening when the Lone Ranger and Toto reached town and told Mark Collins what had happened to the old man as they carried Sam to his bedroom on the first floor. Two hours later, the man who rented the room directly over Sam Trotter's entered the cafe. He was a sneaky individual whose nickname described his character. His name was Jackson, but everyone called him Snooper. Hi, boss. What are you grinning about, Snooper? 
Uh, you look downright well pleased with yourself. Listen to me, will you, boy? Sam had an accident. He was brought in a couple of hours ago by an Indian and a man who wears a mask. They're still in his bedroom with him. What kind of accident? He was caught in a landslide. I never saw anyone who was smashed up worse. You saw him? Yeah, you know about the hole I drilled in the forest. I could watch him. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you've been watching for weeks, hoping he'd say or do something to let you know where his gold claim was located. The map was hidden inside the mattress. You telling me true facts? Yeah. He knows he's dying, and he wants his property to go to a grandson who's coming from the east. Mark Collins is writing to tell the grandson about the gold claim. What about the map? Sam gave it to the masked man. Did he know the masked man? Yeah, not at first. But after they talked for a spell, the masked man showed a silver bullet. And reminded Sam that his horse was called Silver. But the... Then Sam realized he was talking to the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger? He's been out to get me ever since he smashed my gang in El Dorado. Gosh, Bart, I didn't know you were dodging him. I didn't think he traced me all the way here to Old Town. Well, it's the Lone Ranger who's got old Sam's map. I reckon Sam figured he could protect it better than Mark Collins. I wouldn't tangle with that Lone Ranger unless I had a gang. I've been hoping to build up a new gang so I could get him before he gets me. If my plan works out, Bart, you'll have plenty of cash to work with. I'm not going to try to take the map away from the Lone Ranger if that's what you've got in mind. Oh, that's not it. That wouldn't do any good if old Sam has filed on his claim. What's your plan? Old Sam wants to be sure his grandson gets the gold claim. When the boy comes to Mark Collins, she'll tell him how to find the Lone Ranger. Yes, so what? All we've got to do is meet Larry and get him out of the way. And get someone to take his place. Who? I know just the fella. He hangs out at the cafe over in Larrabee. He's just 18, the same age as Larry Porter. He'd be open to a proposition. You sure young Porter will inherit the gold claim when Sam Trotter dies? Yeah. Sam made out a will. All right, then. As soon as old Sam dies, we'll talk to Curly Everett. The Lone Ranger and Tottle left through a rear door of the boarding house when the doctor belatedly arrived. The doctor found that nothing further could be done for the injured man. Snooper and Bart Reynolds rode to the town of Larrabee and outlined their plan to Curly Everett. And as I see it, I'm the pose as the old man's grandson. I inherit the gold claim and split with you two. Yeah, Curly. We'll do away with the real grandson. We split three ways. All right. I'll settle for a third. It's a deal. Mark Collins had word from Larry Porter. He's arriving at Grant's Pass next Thursday on the stage. Grant's Pass? That's not far from Old Town. It's about two hours by horse. The stage don't come through Old Town. Yeah, I know that. I told Mark Collins I'd borrow a buckboard from the livery stable and meet Porter at the stage. Now, here's how we'll handle things. You go to Grant's Pass with me and Bar. We'll wait there for the stage. <laughs> The following Thursday found the three conspirators in Grant's Pass. Curly stood between Bart and Snooper on the station platform when the stage arrived. There's Sam Trotter's grandson. Yeah, there's just one passenger, so it must be Larry Potter. Hey, Porter! Hey, he's looking at us. Yeah, you're the one I mean. Come over here. How did you know my name? We were sent to meet you. Oh, by my grandpa? Well, not exactly. But get aboard and we'll tell you all about it. Fine, fine. We'll take you over to Old Town in no time. I'm Jackson. This is Bart. That there's Kirk. Hi, Larry. Glad to know you. You drive, Snooker. Yeah. Get it. Come on. Get it. Porter, didn't you have a letter from your grandpa? Yes, I did. It came from the woman who runs his boarding house. You have that letter? Yes, it's right here. Well, I'll take it. Oh, wait. You didn't have to grab it. Shut up. Are you, you're pulling a gun. Don't you, Curly? See if he's armed. Right. I, I'm not armed. Now, what does this mean? What's the idea? You may as well know it now, kid. You're not going to Old Town. Because we're going to a cave, Snooper. And I'll tell you how to get there. Lined up a new gang to help me out on this deal. Bart, I don't like the idea of you organizing a new gang without letting me know. I don't care whether you like it or not. Now drive where I tell you. After we get the old man's gold claim, I aim to get square with a long range. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. 
Full back Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's a star because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real gold power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. When Larry Porter came from the east to inherit old Sam Trotter's gold claim, he was captured, knocked unconscious, and taken to a cave. When he regained consciousness, he found himself tightly tied and gagged. He was dressed in the shirt and dungarees that Curly Everett had worn. Neither Curly nor Snooper were around, but Bart was there, and with him were half a dozen hard-faced men. As Larry's head began to clear, he heard the sound of approaching horses. A moment later, Snooper and Curly drew rein and entered the cave. Curly was wearing Larry's eastern clothing. Well, you finally got back. What took you so long? We had to return the buckboard to the livery stable. And I had to pick up my horse and rent one with saddle and bridle for Curly to ride. Did you get the information from Mark Holland? Uh, it's easy as falling off a log. We got it all right, Bart. I didn't doubt for a minute that Curly was Larry Porter. She told him how to find the Lone Ranger. Where? He'll be at Cedar Falls. Curly, you go meet that masked man. Get the map, show him where the gold claim's located. Yeah, all right. Maybe instead of giving me the map, he'll decide to ride to the place with me. In that case, I can't come back here. In that case, you leave a trail that we can follow. You know how to leave Blaze is another sign? Sure. And what about the real Larry Porter? We'll get rid of him when we're sure we don't need him. Go and see that Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger and Toto had left the vicinity soon after old Sam's death, but had returned to their Cedar Falls camp in time to meet the grandson who had come from the east. Curly produced letters and other documents that seemed to prove he was Larry Porter. Then the masked man showed him the map. He said... If you don't know this part of the country, the map will mean little to you. I'll take you to the gold claim. Well, I, I don't exactly like the idea of traveling with a masked man. Well, you're not going to have a choice. Hello. Uh, we break camp? Yes, we'll start out at once. The Lone Ranger set a slow pace through valleys and canyons, and without seeming to do so, kept a sharp watch on the man who was supposed to have recently arrived from the east. At sundown, the horseman drew rein... Curly Everett helped the masked man and Toto pitch camp. After supper, the three were sitting around the fire when the Lone Ranger broke a long period of silence. Is this the first time you've been in the West? Yes. You ride very well. Do they have Western saddles where you came from? Why, uh, I had one. Well, what about it? Uh, I'd like to know your real name. Huh? Why, I'm Larry Porter. I doubt that. Why should you doubt it? Didn't I show you letters and other identification? Your name's not Larry Porter, and you're not an Easterner. Who are you, and what are you up to? Now, see here. How did you blaze a trail? Blaze a trail? You've taken every opportunity to break off the low branches of a tree, or ride over soft ground, or break down tall grass. Who's following us? I didn't mean to blaze a trail. How did you kill Larry Porter? I didn't kill him. He's not... <laughs> Why, you... No, you're not Larry Porter. Now, you better tell me the rest. No, wait, wait. Listen, listen, I'll talk. All right. Oh, I, I had to do it. They made me. I didn't have no choice. Who made you do what? It was Bart Reynolds and Snooper Jackson. They captured Porter and made me take his place while they hold him prisoner. They'd have killed me if I hadn't done it. Bart Reynolds, I want him. Where are those crooks? Somewhere on the back trail. Please, mister, believe me when I tell you I didn't have no choice. What's your real name? Everett. They call me Curly. All right, we'll deal with you later. Toto, you stay here and watch him. Without that campfire, keep this place dark and quiet. I'll be back. Uh, Above all, don't let Everett escape. Easy, steady, big fellow. One, two, three. The Lone Ranger rode 
strode over the back trail with increasing caution, and as far as possible on ground that was soft enough to absorb much of the sound of Silver's hoofbeats. Presently, he saw a distant campfire and became more wary than ever. It wasn't the whole easy to be <laughs> He dismounted some distance from a camp in the shelter of trees. He led his horse nearer, then dropped the reins to the ground and continued on foot, making no more noise than a shadow. Stopping behind a large boulder, he studied the situation and counted eight men in the firelight. Four lay wrapped in blankets on the ground. The others sat and talked while they sipped coffee from tin cups. Apart from the group just beyond the glow of the campfire, the Lone Ranger saw one man who was about the same age as Curly Everett. His face was pale and had the softness of an Easterner. He sat on the ground with his back against a tree. His hands were tied at the wrists behind the tree to effectively hold him prisoner. That must be Larry Porter. The Lone Ranger drew a knife and moved silently behind the tree to which the Easterner was tied. Hoping that Larry would make no outcry of surprise, he touched him on the arm and said, Keep quiet and I can help you. Not if your name is Larry Porter. Yes, that's what I thought. And I'm cutting these ropes. Are your feet tied? Yes. Take this knife and cut the rope. Thanks. I don't know who you are, but I'm, I'm sure. I'm the man Mark Collins would have sent you to. I have the map to your gold claim. Another man went in my place. I learned that he was an imposter. The conversation had been too low to be overheard by any members of the gang around the fire. Then Snooper happened to turn just in time to see Larry moving away from the tree. This way, Larry, run. He'll get us. This way, that rock will give us some protection. Here's my horse. Did you steady, big fella? Sit behind the saddle and hang on to me. Give me your hand, I'll help you up. Hey, you're, you're masked. <laughs> They're coming, Tuttle. You've got Tuttle? Yes. Take the imposter with you. Got due south from here and ride for town. Get the sheriff. And what you do? To try to put those crooks where they belong. You're going to wait until they're within view, then cut north to the Box Canyon. You get into a trap. Yes, we'll be in a trap. It's up to you to bring the law to get us out. The Lone Ranger saw Tuttle and Curly start away, then waited until the moonlight revealed the outlaws in the distance. Larry saw them at the same moment. There they come. Good. They'll start shooting. Your white horse makes a good target. You keep out of six-gun range. Mark Reynolds' gang turned from the trail to ride north after the masked man and Larry. They pushed their horses to top speed without drawing near enough to make gunplay effective. Right, keep after them. That horse can't travel forever at that speed with a double load. Don't be so sure about that. That's Silver. Mark, turn to the side. We got him. Going to a box canyon. They can't get out of there. It's got a blind end. Get to the mouth of the canyon and go away. Yes, yes, come on, there. Come on, there. As the outlaws drew rein at the mouth of the box canyon, they saw the white horse some distance ahead. Uh, there he goes, boys. We've got to kill that masked man and Larry. If we don't, he'll spoil everything. Well, he must have squealed. I wonder where he is. We'll find him later and deal with him after we kill the Lone Ranger. Come on, boys. Let's Let's go. Go. The Lone Ranger and Larry traveled for about two miles between the perpendicular walls of the canyon. When they came to the blind end of the canyon, the masked man threw rain. Oh, no, no. oh easy, steady. This is as far as we can go. We're trapped. We can't get out. Easy, steady, big fella. Some of these boulders are big enough to hide both of us as well as silver. We can make a stand. Can you use a gun? Oh, I, I've done a little shooting. All right, take one of my guns. Don't fire unless I give the word. All right. I'll do enough shooting to keep those men away. Through the remaining hours of night, the gunplay was spasmodic. The outlaws had dismounted and taken shelter behind rocks. They fired intermittently. The Lone Ranger returned the gunfire occasionally. But for the most part, he kept a sharp watch for men who tried to scurry from the cover of one rock to a nearer one. Two of the outlaws were wounded in the leg, but had managed to crawl to shelter. Daybreak found the masked man's ammunition very low. In spite of everything, they've managed to get off of course. Yes, I know. We're trapped. We can't ever get out of here. We'll fight as long as possible. Now, look, I'm the one they want. Let me surrender. There's no reason for you to die. Forget it. I'm sorry. I took them off this long. Well, that found the mark. Why did you come in here? Didn't you know this was a blind canyon? Of course I knew it. I 
came here because I wanted those crooks to be trapped. But we'll be never... Be quiet and listen. What's that? Not on the sheriff's men. The law? Yes. Now you can see them coming up from behind the others. And the crooks are trapped here. They're giving up. They're putting their hands up. That's what we've been fighting for. Come on, Larry. You have a few things to tell the sheriff. Right. Larry, look at that man, the leader of those crooks. What about him? He's Bart Reynolds, a notorious outlaw I've been trailing for a long time. The sheriff and his men quickly roped the members of the gang and took a statement from Larry Porter. It was one week later when the young man from the east returned to Old Town and told Ma Collins of his adventure. I wouldn't have a thing, Mrs. Collins, if it hadn't been for that masked man. In fact, I... I wouldn't even be alive. What? I tried to make him take a half interest in the claim, but he wouldn't. Of course he wouldn't, Larry. He said if I were grateful for being alive, I might show it by using some of the gold to build a new school here in Old Town. And that's just what I'm going to do. Oh, then you'll stay here and make your home in Old Town? <laughs> if you'll let me have the same room Grandpa had. It's yours, Larry. Yes, sirree. Oh, I've been hoping you'd move in with me. You know, Mrs. Collins, maybe you can help me do as that masked man asked. Build a school and do some good with Grandpa's gold claim. I'd be glad to, Larry. Glad to. And don't keep calling him a masked man. Why, I don't know what else to call him. He, he didn't tell me his name. You call him the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. A part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.